Hello my lovelies and welcome to the Parabaf Girl. So I am so excited about this video. This is about N-acetyl glucosamine also called NAG. So NAG is the new trending ingredient of the skincare industry and if you want to stay ahead and you want to learn about this ingredient then this video is for you. So this one video will also entirely explain the ordinary Saccharomyces ferment donor. So the ordinary kind of set this off in the global market however there were some Indian products which were using NAG from before the ordinary and I think that's really cool. So what is NAG? This video can get a little bit technical but I am going to try and make it as easy for you to understand as possible. So what does NAG do for the skin? And how does it do it? If you want to sum this video really fast and want me to just wrap it all up, then here are the things that NAG tends to do for your skin. One, it creates intense hydration in a different way, in a way which is very different from your hyaluronic acid. I will explain. Secondly, it exfoliates your skin again in a very different way. Nothing like your AHAs, VHAs, or PHAs. I'll get to that again. Pigmentation. This has another very unique way of controlling pigmentation in people. Again, different from kojic acid, tranexamic acid, or alpha butyl I will explain. However, if you haven't watched that video yet about kojic acid, alpha butyl and tranexamic acid and the differences, I suggest you kind of stop this right now. Go watch that video because that will give you like a more in-depth understanding of pigmentation and how those actives work. And if you watch that, you will completely understand exactly what I mean when I come to the pigmentation section of this product. And it also has some antioxidant properties as well, but we will be focusing on the top three because those are, in my opinion, really, really cool. So by hydration, how is this different? So NAG is basically used in skincare up to 5% in concentration. And NAG basically helps your body synthesize its own hyaluronic acid. It helps your body make its own hyaluronic acid. Now, how is that different? Why can't you just topically apply hyaluronic acid and get through with it, right? Well, number one, because when you stop applying your hyaluronic acid, the results are going to disappear, right? Because you have to keep applying hyaluronic acid to create that plump effect. But if your body is synthesizing it from root, from all the way deep inside, not only will it create a certain plumpness in your skin, that hydration coming from within supports a lot of other natural um, skin processes which makes your skin healthier in the long run. And even if you stop applying NAG, you have kind of created your own hyaluronic acid that's going to give you longer lasting hydration. So how does NAG do this? And this is where it gets interesting. Okay. So what is hyaluronic acid and how is it made? So for hyaluronic acid to be made, to create it, to synthesize hyaluronic acid, we need two ingredients. Okay, number one, NAG, which is N-acetylglucosamine, which is already present in your skin. That's half of hyaluronic acid. The other half of the material required is called glucuronic acid. Again, your skin can make its own glucuronic acid. So when you combine NAG, glucuronic acid, you get hyaluronic acid. So now you're topically applying NAG, right? So you're supplying half of the ingredient required to make hyaluronic acid, correct? But what about glucuronic acid? Now you can ask me, why can't I just topically apply glucuronic acid? You could, but it won't work. Because the molecule size of glucuronic acid is too big to actually penetrate your skin and get to where it needs to go. Instead of directly supplying glucuronic acid to your skin, we can provide your skin the raw material required in order to create its own glucuronic acid. And that includes peptides and mainly glucose or ferments, which is where the ordinary has basically killed it. Because it does have saccharomyces ferment, which in turn helps your body create its own glucuronic acid. So with this product, you're basically supplying your skin with energy and you're supplying your skin with uh, the raw material for glucuronic acid to be formed. Hence, you are creating more hyaluronic acid from the root, from the base, which gives you long lasting hydration. So moving on, exfoliation. Now, hydration kind of plays a role here, which we just spoke about and I'll explain why. Now, how is this different from acids? Okay, so your skin has a natural shedding, exfoliating mechanism. Even if you didn't put all of these acids like AHA, BHA, PS, even if you didn't like wash your face or you did literally nothing, your skin has its own skin shedding mechanism called desquamation. So this is your skin and this is the top layer of your skin. Now, most of the time, the top layer of your skin tends to have dead skin cells, okay? And there are bonds which attach, which kind of glue together the dead skin cells. So there are certain enzymes which eat, which kind of dissolve the bonds between the two dead cells. Okay, we have protease and multiple other kind of enzymes. So in a sort of summarized way, what NAG does is it provides the perfect environment for those enzymes to continue acting out their process. It creates hydration because well-hydrated skin 
tends to just fall apart on its own much easier. It tends to loosen, shed its dead skin much easier from deep within. There's also a receptor called CD44, which basically the more your skin is irritated, the more your skin is inflamed, it increases in strength. And that further contributes to the stickiness between the cells. So basically energy inhibits it. It stops the CD44 and prevents more and more of that sticky bond between dead cells increasing, hence further supporting exfoliation. But how is it different from acids? Acids are very different. They are forcibly breaking bonds between your skin. They, they're literally acid, guys. They are gonna tear the bonds between your skin apart. So acids and energy work very differently. Energy is more mild than PHAs. We know that AHAs are pretty strong. PHAs is a little more mild and PHAs are the mildest but NAG is even more mild than PHA. Energy also helps to boost your own collagen. It can be paired with almost all of your ingredients. It is unnecessary, however, and not really recommended to pair it with any of your AHAs or BHAs. Like if you're using a chemical peel or if you're using an AHA BHA toner, it's just unnecessary. It's too much of exfoliation. But however, you can safely pair it with vitamin C, alpha arbutane, niacinamide, kojic acid, tranexamic acid, even your retinols. Another thing, NAG works beautifully when it's paired with niacinamide. Both of them work synergistically to give you fantastic results. Now here is the thing about pigmentation. Again, if you haven't watched the previous video where I've made on it, I highly suggest you watch it so you can understand what triggers melanin. But here is how energy works in order to stop that pigmentation from forming. Now you know that tyrosinase is the main enzyme responsible for creating melanin. So when tyrosinase is basically not doing its job, when it's just chilling, there's no sign of inflammation, when there's no alarm system going off, which forces your tyrosinase to make melanin, it's basically just chilling. It's in its own little, you know, bubble, sort of wrapped up, kind of inactive, sleeping. The moment the alarms start that there is some sort of inflammation, tyrosinase basically just gets out of its blanket and starts working, right? But what does NAG do? NAG basically keeps that blanket on. It's kind of like keeping your tyrosinase at its sleeping condition. Does that make sense? So it further suppresses the tyrosinase, keeps the blanket on and sort of keeps it in an inactive condition. So that is how it is different from kojic acid, alpha arbutane, tranexamic acid, and that's all we discussed in the previous video, yeah. So energy is a relatively expensive ingredient in skincare at this point, which is why when you see products with energy, they can be slightly heavier priced. And of course that depends on the concentration, on the quality. So the ordinary has about 3% energy and uh, Sugandha, I think it has 2% energy. If there are any corrections, I'll put them on the screen, but that's the nice sweet spot when it comes to formulation. It's right in between. It ideally shouldn't irritate your skin. It's great for sensitive skin as well. The one thing however I have noticed that pairing this with my uh, regular tretinoin use has been causing some sensitivity. So yes, just check that your sensitive skin is able to tolerate energy well. Most of the time it shouldn't be a problem and it should actually do a really good job. So that is everything about your new skincare ingredient NAG. You will be seeing this more in regular skincare products and, and I am very excited because this is a super ingredient which has the potential to tackle multiple problems in just one ingredient in a way different from anything we've experienced before. So if you found this video helpful, please hit that like, share and subscribe button. You can also follow me on Instagram at and until we meet next time, lots of love. Stay healthy, stay hydrated.